Hi, I'm Ryan Rastock, the Forest Health Specialist with the Kansas Forest Service. And I'm here to talk to you today about calorie pear. Some of the really common cultivars that we deal with or you've heard about before, Bradford pear, Cleveland pear, a few others. Some are being developed now that you shouldn't plant. Here's the flower. Some people think it's pretty, but give it a whiff. Oh. When we're talking about trying to learn or identify this tree in the landscape, there are some pretty conspicuous features that we can look for, especially this time of year. We're in April 7th, 2023. This is when they start to bloom in their flowers. They have these very conspicuous white flowers that can uh, resemble some other native species like American plum or even black cherry to some extent. And so you'll want to be sure that you're identifying it properly. And now during the dormant season, you'll be able to look at the buds of the tree and they're really fluffy and pretty conspicuous as well. And now you take both of those features and you can kind of add it to the general structure or growth of the tree. They tend to kind of have this more erect growth habit with these narrow branch angles that uh, can cause some structural issues into the future. So you add all of those things together and that'll kind of give you the general picture of what this tree looks like. And the foliage is, is pretty nondescript, so it can be challenging from just a simple leaf to identify this species. And so now that we've introduced, you know, what this species is and what it looks like, we had mentioned talking about the branch angles on this tree. And so one of the things that comes to mind first among many with Bradford pear are, is this is this acute or tight V-shaped branch angles which can cause a weak junction, some bark inclusion, and if there's enough force applied to those through wind or storm, then it's very common that we'll see whole branch failures in the landscape, which is not only a mess to deal with, but could pose some risk and some other things and cause some responses in that tree in the form of sprouting. And so even without damage, uh, that will initiate some sprouting. They tend to sprout very profusely internally and it's kind of a maintenance issue anyway as far as pruning and maintaining those trees in the landscape. And then aside from that, you know, the flowers that we had, had discussed, you know, they might be pretty, but really if you give them a smell, there's a really, really horrible smell associated with these flowers. And when you have these species planted as a monocrop across an entire block or neighborhood, then that smell becomes very conspicuous and quite unpleasant. And so the real reason that we're sharing this video with you other than the nuisance characteristics that I just listed for this species is that it's widely accepted and been observed to be invasive in surrounding landscapes and areas. This is a particularly in the form of woody encroachment in grasslands and fields and pastures, uh, primarily adjacent to urban landscapes where it's been widely planted. And so when we see this happening, what occurs is that we get a shift in the ecosystem services in, in an overall reduction in diversity. And so this can have impacts on the animals and other plants that could have wide ranging impacts overall to our native ecosystems here in Kansas and then throughout the nation. And so we need to be very aware of where this is planted and then try to address those issues to mitigate it's, it's spread and impact into these surrounding ecosystems. So another question that I get asked pretty frequently is what is the impact, if any, on our native pollinators and on European honeybees here in Kansas from the presence of something like calorie pear? Clearly with flowers like this, they'd be very attractive and can provide a source for pollinators. But the issue really becomes when they become invasive into these grasslands and other areas and start to displace our native species, you start to get that, that reduction in plant diversity, which has a reciprocal impact on our other native pollinators that might depend on some of those species for some part of their life cycle. And so once they get to, once Bradford pear, calorie pear gets to that stage, then we start to see some impacts on pollinators and then reciprocal uh, ripples throughout the food chain, maybe resonating down into birds and other things throughout time. So what can you do if you have a calorie pear on your property or in your adjacent property? First of all, knowledge is power. So you can inform your neighbors and your loved ones and people throughout the community to build awareness of this species and its invasive potential. And then once that awareness is built, then we can do a few things about that, which could be remove and replace, or there's one significant type of pruning activity that I tend to advocate for, which is what we call the one cut basil prune method. You take your saw, you cut it at the base, and you cut the whole thing out, and then you're done and get rid of the stump. And then you can plant back some native or more desirable woody vegetation, such as American plum, 
black cherry, and there are a few other things as well that you can look about planting into the landscape. Before record, so like hello Ryan Rastock, yep. forest health specialist for the Kansas Forest Service. We're here today to talk to you about. Oh. <laughs> is that I mean, about <laughs> this <laughs> cultivars are Bradford pear, Cleveland pear, and this is the flower. <laughs> ooh, actually, ooh, I actually smelled <laughs> it. Oh, I actually did smell it on that one. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'll do like the title. So, so like, okay. hi, I'm Ryan Rastock with the Kansas Forest Service, or Ryan Rastock, Forest Health Specialist of the Kansas Forest Service. Mm -hmm. Today we're here to talk to you about calorie pear, common cultivars, Bradford pear, Cleveland pear, a few others, and a few others being developed now that you shouldn't plant. And here's the flower. I love it. Is that, was that a good, I like, I, I need to quit actually smelling it though. <laughs> it's like, it's like killed by dose. Your face will do the rest. <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, I'm not all stuffed up, but I'll do it. I'll take it for the team. Oh, 